Here we have yet another 4090 video card that came in for a melted connector. I worked on a 4090 a few days ago, and I mentioned on that video that today I worked on three other 4090s with a melted connector. What's going on? This one is the Gigabyte RTX 4090 OC24. And if we read what the customer wrote, melted power connector on Gigabyte RTX 4090 gaming OC24. That's all the information that we have. The customer was straight to the point and we know that we have a melted connector. Now, the last 4090 video card I worked on, which was a few days ago, replacing the melted connector, we received a lot of comments. And people wrote in the comments that the problem is a user error. The user did not plug in the cable all the way, and that's why the connector melted. Or it has been proven that if the cable is not plugged in all the way to a point where that cable snaps onto the connector, then that connector will melt. Other people wrote, why didn't the owner of the card mail this over for warranty? The card is covered under warranty. People replied, because it's a user's fault, warranty will not fix the card, or that it will take a long time for the maker of the card to honor warranty. Now, having read all the comments that I read, what do I personally think? Is it a user's fault, a user error, or is it the maker of the card? Who should we blame this on? If you are making a device, you are making a video card, you are making a car, you are making a jet plane, whatever the case may be, you have to take into consideration that the end user is dumb. You cannot say because the user did not plug in the cable all the way, the connector is melting and now we're going to blame it on you and we're not going to honor warranty. You cannot do that. Now, if the factory or the maker of the connector or the maker of the card are aware of that if the cable is not plugged in all the way, that connector will melt, it's still on them and not on the user. If they were not aware of if the cable is not plugged in all the way, that connector will melt, it's still on them and not on the user. The user is paying $2,500 for this card and the connector is melting after one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month. It depends when the user connected that cable halfway if in fact not connecting the cable all the way in is what's melting the connector. The fault is on the factory, on the maker and not on the user. The user is not a psychic. The user is not a magician to know that if the cable is not plugged in all the way, the connector is gonna melt. 100% on the maker of the cart. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Do you think that this is a user's error, a user fault, or the maker of the card, or even the engineer or the designer of the connector? It used to be that we have three connectors on top. Now we have only one connector that splits into four 12 volt lines. We never heard of that if the cable is not fully plugged in to one of the three connectors on top, the connector is going to melt. We never heard of such a thing until the 40 series came out with this connector here. One connector that splits into four 12 volt lines. Let's take a look at the connector and see what's going on. How bad, look at this. The connector melted exactly the same way as the last 4090 that we worked on. Exactly the same, the top row and not the bottom one. If we look at the pins, we do not see any burn mark on the pins. It's only the plastic because the melting temperature of plastic is a lot less than melting a lot of solder on a 12, 14 layer board. I always mention it when working on video cards, the card will take extreme amount of heat for solder to melt because of the thermal mass. The board is thick and a lot of solder takes a lot of heat to melt to begin with. Add the thermal mass of the board and you have a monster. And I said in the previous video that you cannot kill a monster with a slingshot. You have to have a machine gun. Right now, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to cut the pins. So now that we cut some of the pins, we're going to go on back of the board and we're going to apply low melt solder. And we are using original Amtec Flux. We are a distributor of the Flux. You can buy it off our site. Just log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, and you can buy this genuine Amtec Flux, solder braid, hot air station, soldering station, thermal camera, charging stations, voltage injection tool, tweezers, anything that we use on the bench here, we carry and sell in our shop. We have everything in stock and orders almost always ship out same day. We're going to turn the fume extractor on. 
And if you look here, I'm using a big tip. Okay, the station is 450 degrees now. We're gonna apply low melt solder everywhere, here, here. And to speed up the process, we can also apply hot air as well as low melt solder. Solder likes heat. Wherever you have heat, solder will flow. And that's why you see solder sticking on the tip and not on the board because the board is not hot enough for solder to transfer over. The tip is hotter. So solder sticks onto the tip. And that's why I tell you this 490 is a monster. A lot of thermal mass. You have to have a lot of heat for solder to transfer over to those pins. Now I'm using hot air. And you see how solder is flowing easily now? Look at this. And now the question is, why are we looking at all the glare and reflections while well, we have the option to put the anti-glare light on like this? Magic. If you have not already purchased an anti-glare light, log into our site. Add to cart, check out, and we almost always ship out same day. So if we flip the board, I just took the connector right off. Look at this. I snapped the connector right off. Now the connector came right off because of low melt solder on those pins and here. Since I clipped those pins, they are still on the board. We're gonna flip the board. And now the connector will go on like this. Very nice. We want to make sure it's nice and flush. And now we're going to solder from the back. Now let's check and make sure all the pins are visible and I see all the pins. Now I have my finger under the connector so it's nice and flush with the board. We're going to apply some solder on a few pins and then I'll let go and we'll finish soldering all the pins. And we should be good. Very nice, now we're going to clean up and we're going to apply one more layer of flux. Go over the connector. And then we can call this video card to fix. Look at those shiny joints. Awesome. Now to make this even more perfect, 
let's add a bit of solder mask on those brown areas that we exposed not a big deal but why not it only takes 20 seconds so I have the UV light pointed at the board some alcohol on the swab and just go like this and now we want to check front of the board we want to make sure solder made its way all the way to the top and look at this every single pin has solder that made its way all the way from back of the board to front of the board very solid connection here 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 and all the pins in the back amazing amazing we did a super job before we end the video i have news for you ups came in about 15 minutes ago with a lot of packages we opened up some of those packages and guess what we have another 4090 that came in for a melted connector and you're still telling me user error look at this this one i noticed a 90 degree adapter so how did that connector melt with an adapter that's plugged in like a rock we cannot blame it on a loose cable or on a cable that's not connected properly unless not connecting the cable properly to the adapter is melting the power connector highly unlikely what caused the connector to melt on this one we'll go over it in a future video try to analyze what's going on or try to figure out how that connector melted is a loose cable really is what's melting the connector or is it too much power for that one connector we'll see let me know what you think leave it down in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video hey what's up man